Oh, they're trying. They were trying before. Um, no, not 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 enough. No, no naive individual errors, bad defending, as it's been from the beginning of the season. Um, no, not not hard to play against. Not hard to beat. I expected a more resilient. I mean, the problem you've got is going in there is that you don't want to be shutting up shot, putting everyone behind the ball because the fans don't like it. Whereas that's exactly what they need to be doing. Shutting up shot, everyone behind the ball, fighting for your life, nick a draw, build some momentum. Exactly what most firefighters do when they go in. Big Sam talks about it all the time. One of the best that you go in, you get some clean sheets by hook or by crook. And you have to forget the fans. The good stuff's going to come at Newcastle. The money they've got, whether they go down, stay up, they get the good times are going to come. You're just going to have to wait. But right now, the only way you have of staying in division is fighting like mad, being hard to beat, getting some clean sheets, being tough, being tenacious, and waiting until January to get some new bodies in who give you a bit of quality going the other way. While you go away to Arsenal and Leicester and play 4-4-2, you know, why you, why you... Man City's different. They're steamrolling everyone at the moment. But while you're looking so vulnerable and so easy to play against, you're just... You're just killing confidence. Well, they still get a chance. Not much of a chance. Tiny chance. But they still get a chance of staying up. Yep. Do they need a certain type of character when it comes to the sort of player they're going to recruit in January? It did, well, you, you need brave footballers who are, who are good at playing under pressure and wanting the ball. But it depends if, you buy, if you're buying players on a permanent deal. You want good mentality who are prepared for a fight and know what to do when they go down the championship and, and they're on board with that if they go down. If you're bringing in loan players, you don't have to have that worry. If you're paying a loan fee for a player, for example, who's got more creativity and, and putting himself in the shop window, if you like, and taking a risk on maybe staying up, maybe, you know, if, if he'll stay if you stay up, but if not, he's going to be off. You just need someone who's willing to get on the ball, express himself and show how good he is. It's a different, it's a different criteria depending on whether you're going for a permanent or whether you're going for a loan. Ultimately, they need a lot of players to get out of that. And I'm talking five or six. I mean, in comes Nicky Hammond, Simon, mm. interim transfer consultant. Mm. What can he do? Spend a lot of other people's money. Um, I don't think you should take anything from these two games. What, did anybody in their right mind think they were going to beat Manchester City then? Did anybody think they were going to beat Liverpool? So wh- No, I'm, we... I was talking about Arsenal and Leicester. Uh, fine, but even in those games, why would Newcastle on form at this moment in time beat either of those sides? They wouldn't, but it's the way they lost. Uh, but, OK, they, they can't defend, they're not good enough. That's what I and said. You, you, yeah, if you're Newcastle and you're putting people like Joe Linton in the middle of the park, you must be looking at, the, at your squad going, other players looking at that going, how comes Joe Linton's getting put in midfield? Well, he's he's in arguably my place? been there, one of the best players. Possibly, but not as a midfield player. That's not his job, is it? His job is to be a centre forward. And you've got to look at it that way. But I look at it and say, Nick Hammond, OK. Yeah, well, he was at Reading for a long time, and he's not a magician. I met, I met him a few times, and whatever. Um, he's gone off to <laughs> West Bromwich Albion. Don't think he set that place on fire, but he's been at Celtic. So he's gone in there, and he obviously has a relationship with the owners from some scenario because he doesn't strike me as an individual that's going to strike fear into the hearts of teams that want to retain players that Newcastle might want to buy or people that would want to come to Newcastle as a result of the inspiration yeah. they're going to get. Yeah. I don't. I still think that Newcastle have a chance because I don't think there's a possibility that any of the games that they're playing right now, which is an awful run of fixtures, were going to tell us anything. Unfortunately, what's gone before has told us a certain story, that they were capable of drawing 50% of the games that they played in. And going against Manchester City, who will decimate 90% of teams, is not an indication of where Newcastle are. They turn on the end... I mean, I thought they turned at the end of the year after 19 games on 14 points. They might have a a real chance. I don't think they're going to turn on 14 points. They're probably going to turn on 10. But I still think the league is so poor. Watford are so poor. And other teams are so poor in their point um, um, accumulation. 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 Thank you, Danny. You okay? We are in a situation where nobody's getting... Who's getting away, yeah. Jim? Yeah, who's, what, what, who's getting Jim away asked, from, Sorry. No, I true. Don't, I don't your, know if your you, point's a good one, but no, like to Watford, sure. What Jim, what Jim actually asked me, Simon, is I do, have I seen a difference from what Steve Bruce Nothing. did? And, well, that's what I said. Yeah, that's right. And sorry, that's, yeah. What I, that's what I was talking about. I haven't... Irrelevant of opposition... I've not seen... I've not seen a big change. It's not like they've become more... The only They're game, more offensive. Steve Bruce tried to be offensive with them. They got spanked. Yeah. Exactly. 
You don't need that. My point was, and my point still is, they've got to get, they've got to stop trying to please the supporters, Eddie Howe and his staff, and they've got to put everyone behind the ball and start scrapping but, and winning but, results. But Arsenal, okay, I think you get, could put the best manager of the world in there, not just Eddie Howe, anyone. I agree. And I don't think they're ready. I'm not but, digging out Eddie Howe. Any chance I, in hell I, of turning I, it around. Right. Howe's teams can't defend. Yeah, but he's an intelligent man. I but thought, they can't, I, but I, he was an intelligent man at Bournemouth, and they couldn't defend. And the moment Bournemouth stopped scoring goals. And they actually rely on being a bit more defensive minded and stop the the rot of goals going in. They got relegated. So you've brought somebody in to, that needs to do what you're saying, yep. but doesn't have it in his coaching but repertoire. My, my, has never exhibited it in his coaching repertoire, yes. and is now going to do something completely different than he's ever done before. I know, but I, and I'm surprised that he hasn't gone that way. Because if I said go back to my point originally, yeah. one of the best at it, Big Sam, first thing he does, clean sheets. Shut hard up, to beat. But that's his Roy stock, but came they, into Fulham. Clean, but that's his stock draw. in trade. That's what they do. Eddie Howe that's doesn't what they do need. that. Yeah, but then they made the wrong appointment, haven't they? Well, that's, because they brought somebody did, did we in not say that, that doesn't... It, we, we, we've discussed it and we yeah, agree yeah. on that. But here we are now. And what we're saying is, is fo no, football people are supposed to be the experts, right? Yeah. The guys that are managing on the yeah. ground. Yeah. I'm sat here as a former football club owner, never a player, never a manager, right? Watching it going, if I want somebody to stop the rot and it's going to have to be ugly and it's going to have to be on the basis of compromising everything to get us in the division and I'll deal with a backlash Amazing. when I'm still in the division, yeah. then I don't get Eddie Howe. I get somebody that can do that and I take the slings and arrows because do you know what? The most important thing for the Newcastle fans was 143 Sports Direct boards being taken down. Right? The, 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 the image of Mike Ashley wiped from this, the, 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 the history of Newcastle as much Banking. as they possibly could. So, so then we talk about getting, getting mm. results and grinding out results and banking up and doing what Rafa Benitez did, which was taking 19% possession and getting himself to be a hero well, with the Newcastle fans. Kept them up. But Eddie Howe's not doing any of that, is he? And he's probably not going to do any of that. Or, I mean, the, the, the simple fact of the matter is, Simon, if you've won once in 18, then you deserve to go down. Y you do. I mean, there are unique factors behind that, which is a football club in absolute disarray from an ownership model that doesn't know what it's doing currently to an ownership model that was vilified by the fans and the momentum behind it creating a backdrop. But I also look at it and say... With respect to Newcastle, there was a lot of those games that they've had opportunities to win. Mm. They, they they should have beaten Brighton. They were robbed from not beating Should've, Brighton. Should have, could have. I, I was there. I, I know, Jim. But, but they we, didn't. But they're not losing every single game. They, at one point, they were drawing 50% of the games. And, you, and a team that's getting beaten out of sight week in, week out has no chance. They were in 50% of the games they were playing in. And mm. they just got to convert that margin between drawing to winning and they, mm. wink, and they ain't going to do that against Liverpool and they ain't going to do it against Man City and they're not likely to do it against Chelsea or to, Man United to either. simplify this the bottom three this morning Burnley, Newcastle and Norwich are these are these the three that go down? I always give Burnley a fighting chance right yeah right but I, I can't see the other two getting out no Simon do you go with that? Burnley, Newcastle, Norwich? no no, Bur I, what Burnley to get out of it? No, I, I, I've got a f I've, Sean Dyche. I would never back against. They've got three games in hand over Leeds mm. United. Yeah, right. Watford, I think will get relegated. I, you know, I don't care about the bump effect with Ranieri. So I think Norwich will go. I think Watford will go, and it will be a another. And I'm not sure. As much as I, I know people don't like this. Newcastle fans were very most offended by the fact that I'd, I'd have a snigger if they get relegated. <laughs> I actually think that they may get out of it, and it will be one of the greatest escapes we've ever seen. Oh, it certainly would be. Certainly would I think be. You, I think you go along that narrative because because you do want them to go down so much, and you just oh, you don't want to let yourself have that hope. No, no, because I, no, do you know why? Because I think good <laughs> things often happen to bad people, and unfortunately for me, I'm watching what I consider to be a bad regime owning that football club, and they'll probably get the benefit of it. And I great think, fans, and that's I'd love it for and, the fans, and, and that's what I said. Yeah, and that's precisely what I've said. And bad yeah. things happen to good people, indeed, like us, Jim White. And Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.